Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am back in EVE Online for the first time in a long time. I mean, no secret that I love this game, it is the most amazing uh, online experience ever, but I haven't been playing it lately, largely because uh, I more or less won the game with trillions of isk and no need to play again. But I'm back because there is a new feature in the latest release, which is really interesting to me as a scientist. Uh, they have added something called Project Discovery. Now, Project Discovery was uh, originally added last year, and what it did was it allowed players in their downtime, while they're, say, mining or waiting for that hostile force to come through the gate while they're waiting for a timer, they can actually participate in real science. And the previous version was all about classifying cells. The new one is all about looking for exoplanets. So we have this tutorial that comes from uh, Pro Professor Michael Mayer, who uh, is actually named after the real Michael Mayer, who of course discovered uh, one of the first exoplanets around a sun-like star, that's 51 Pegasi b. So he collaborated with CCP to set up the exoplanet program. Uh, Basically, in an effort to cooperate with Capsuleers on the analysis of large amounts of light curve data, we at Concord have set up an exoplanet hunting program using Project Discovery. Even our supercomputers and advanced algorithms are unable to match the effectiveness of Capsuleers, so we need your help. We will start you off with some simple samples, etc, etc. Anyway, this is the fundamental theme of Project Discovery. It turns out that there are some problems, some scientific problems that the human brain is way better at than computers. And there's another one that's famous called Fold It, where it was basically analyzing how proteins fold. There was a piece of software made which allowed gamers to try and help solve how proteins fold into their functional forms. And there are a number of scientific papers which have been written with the help of gamers who played the game and helped solve really fundamental problems in biology with this game. And so they want to do the same for exoplanets. So this is a luminosity graph of a star far, far away. This is collected from the Korot spacecraft, the Convection, Rotation and Planetary Transits spacecraft. It was a space uh, observatory designed to look for light curves on stars. Your job is to identify planetary transits, a point in time where the planet passes in front of the star. So here's one right here, you see that? The x-axis shows time measured in days, you see? So this is like a couple of weeks worth of data. The y-axis shows the luminosity of the star, showing the ratio between the current luminosity and its average luminosity at each point in time. Uh, these are also different classes of transits. You can have eclipsing binaries, uh, the eruptive variables, pulsating stars. Oh yeah, look, we've got all these different classes and rotating stars. So these will help with classifications if you see them. Use the minimap slider to center the transit on the screen. So we do that down here. Uh, bingo. And then we mark the transit by left clicking right in the middle here. And that comes up with an orbital period. Toggle the marker of visibility. See that? The star system simulated by your marker. Each one translates to a single planet and each planet moves in relation. So this is showing a planet rotating. Now there's only one uh, change in brightness here, although I wonder what this could be. So it would probably con correspond to only one planet with a period greater than the two weeks that we observed for. Submit my analysis. And so that's the basic tutorial, right? The way we recognize it is this prominent dip with a, you know, it's a V-shaped dip in this case. It has lots of uh, data points. Single dips like this might just be sign might just be noise, right? Okay, so multiple transits in a single sample. Celestial bodies can orbit around a star very fast. It's not uncommon for a planet or orbit around its host star daily, or in the matter of a few days, you will now be guided how to mark such transits. Firstly, this curve is from a rotating star with solar spots that cause periodic fluctuations in the star's brightness. Use the detrending tool to filter out the solar fluctuation. So what that does is it looks for the low frequency harmonics and just removes them. And so now you end up with multiple transits. Click once on the graph and move your mouse. When the distance has reached half a day, the marker will replicate. Okay, this here? Click once on the drag and move. Okay, let's try that. Ah, so what we're gonna do is just drag. Nope. Ah, so you can adjust the period 
to try and match these things in roughly the right place, right? So you see how I'm, I'm adjusting the period? At this stage, your marker is still modifiable. When marking multiple transits, you will have to test your hypothesis in folded mode, which will be explained shortly. So the idea is we're looking for periodic things, and I've said a period, but you notice it's, it's, um, it's, uh, you know, slightly off, right? So I didn't get it quite right. Let's try, uh, oh yeah, I, cl I marked it in the middle for some reason. Let's try in the middle here, and then drag it over to the next one. And you can actually look far over on the left to see that even with a single pixel accuracy, it starts to break down. By folding the graph onto itself based on the orbital period you have marked, the dips are overlaid on each other. This lets us better compare the regularity of the dips compared to each other. So we're folding all the dips. You see, I haven't quite got it perfect. So you want to align all the transit dips as well as you can. If you can get all the dips aligned, it's highly likely there's a periodic object, right? To change the orbital period, you can either use your mouse wheel. Ah, maybe like that. Ah, they're using my mouse wheel. Beautiful. Bring these things together in perfect harmony. Well done. I am satisfied with that alignment, am I? I... God, there's so much I can do here. Confirm. So let's unfold the data and now submit that analysis. So this is just basically using well-established ones. Eventually, it's going to become a lot harder. The signals will become a lot more spurious. Anyway, after you've completed the tutorial, you basically get to do it in the game, for real. And actually, when I say in the game, you get to do it on real data and, you know, just continue to do it. You will get experience during uh, as you do these. You basically use the same tools, and the idea, of course, is that you're going to learn, you're going to get better, and you're going to deliver this information to those scientists. Now, what's going to happen is this... Uh, well, first of all, they're going to take a look at the results, and they're going to say 57% of people marked those results. Great, so that will get passed on to the the scientists that are working on the data you will get experience points which of course will get you all sorts of goodies and we can talk on that later uh, and oh yeah and every now and then of course they will show you well established results they're showing you this not because they couldn't find it they're showing you this to make sure that you're paying attention right <laughs> that you're not cheating so, you know, it's kind of, they keep reinforcing your training by giving you easy ones, by giving you known ones, but to just verify that you're not making up garbage. This is a common uh, trick. I, th I believe we call them canaries, right? We'll put them in data to make sure that you're, say, submitting to Amazon uh, Mechanical Turk, just to make sure that the people aren't just clicking yes or no randomly. When you're getting data from complete strangers, you have to be very careful to make sure that they're not just BSing you. All right? Standard problem. Okay, so there's also these little uh, solar activity classification things on the side. Various uh, examples of stars with strange light curves that you might want to add as a classification. Now, some of these you want to set up, uh, you know, so here's rotating stars that show different kinds of variations in light curves because of either non-spherical shapes or uh, sunspots or star spots, very large star, star spots in this case. There's pulsating stars, you know, very fast pulsing mechanisms, Cepheid variables and things like that, depending upon the time scale. And then you have eruptive variables, which may have slow, small changes and big spikes every now and then that show large amounts of uh, power being released. There are stars that vary in brightness due to violent processes and flares occurring in the uppermost outer layers of the star. Now, you don't need to assign any of these to stars, but sometimes it's pretty obvious, like the uh, rotating star or the stellar activity. We do have these big spikes here. Oh, you know what, actually, look at this, look, 99 to... I'm gonna say no transits here. This is too small. And, oh, oh my god, really? I failed, apparently, apparently there were transits, regular tra Now I want to go in and look at this. But the only thing is, it gives me an option for fitting. You see, I'm a bad scientist. I failed. I am not very good at this. 
So, look, here's the idea, is that you're going to continue doing this, and you'll get this experience, and you will get better. I, I honestly am going to say that I think it would be good to let people look again at that same thing. Like, issue it again and see if they can learn the abilities, learn to understand this. Now, actually, it's worth talking about the different rewards. One of the ways that uh, the game is encouraging you is you get rewards. First of all, you're going to get crates full of things like skins. But as you go up, you'll get things like a, a cap, the, the exoplanet hunter cat, so clothes. Um, I'm going to point out, incidentally, that a dev blog came out today as well, saying that, by the way, this beautiful captain's quarters that we have known and loved for so many years is going to be removed from the game because uh, nobody wants it. I mean, it is kind of tragic, but the captain's quarters is not long for this world because it would take far too much work for them to bring it up to date. Uh, yeah, you get a shirt. So anyway, I guess what I'm saying is the clothes are primarily for wearing in this space. And we have a pacifier. So if you get to f level 50, if you get to level 50, you get yourself a blueprint for a Concord spaceship, which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, these are a thing that got introduced to the game a while back, and they have some interesting bonuses. Uh, they're very obviously work for every single race. But they're more curious than anything else. I don't think they're particularly awesome spacecraft. Uh, they also do not have the epic Concord weaponry. Also, I notice um, Pacifier Exoplanet skin! And it'll be it. So that's the, the skin that gets applied to that ship. You know what? I might just want to do this. It might take a while, but I, I kind of do want that spaceship. Or I could just use my trillions of isk to buy this on the market. Okay, so let's now take a look at my supply crates. Uh, item hanger, yes, Exoplanet Hunter Reward Crate. Open Exoplanet Hunter Reward Crate. Excitement! This is a reward! The container is hermetically sealed with an electronic locking mechanism. Compromising will cause the container to fully disintegrate. Because they only want you to open this once. Analyzing container encryption! Beep, 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 beep. Okay, I found a Catalyst Exoplanet Hunter skin. Excellent! That's that's great. So I found a, a skin for my Catalyst, if you look at this. And this is what it would look like on the ship, on the Catalyst Destroyer. Um, that's very nice, I'm sure. I, I guess most of the things that we're going to get are going to be skins, paint jobs for the ships. So anyway, that is Project Discovery inside EVE Online. It is doing real science, and I really look forward to see if anything gets found out of it. I, I will then have contributed to the discovery of an exoplanet in an extremely small way. And so can you, if you're one of the players of EVE Online who uh, finds themselves spending a lot of downtime. And let's be clear, it's EVE Online, there's going to be a lot of downtime. I'm Scott Manley, and as many of the players in EVE Online say, fly safe.